Hi, I'm Scott Willis. You're joining me for The Groove Files. We've got Bob McChesney and Larry Goldings here. Let's talk about uh, the concept behind the record and how you got the idea to get this together. I knew I was going to like the music when he talked about uh, some of the standards and that he was interested in playing some of my tunes, which is always very flattering when, mm -hmm. when that happens. So, you know, it was an easy thing for me to decide to want to do. I'm really glad I did now that I've heard it. It's fantastic. It is. And the, you guys collaborated on a couple of tunes as well. Yeah. Yes, we we uh, there's two tunes we collaborated on, uh, The Preakness, which uh, they just ran that race uh, a couple <laughs> of days ago. In the, uh, and the other one was Going Back. And I had, oh, should we tell them about that Going Back? I had mm -hmm. written some of it. And uh, I was like, I've got this great idea, and it's, I've got it up to here, but I really don't know what to do. You think you could do something with it? And Larry took it, and the next time I saw him, it was like this <laughs> masterpiece. It was all finished. No, you you had repeated the melody with some different changes and had this nice blowing section. Mm -hmm. So we worked on that together. Is that common for you guys? Do you, uh, like, split things up, or is it just... Not in the jazz world, no. I mean, that's what, what was cool. But I'm I have been doing a lot of collaborative writing you know, more in the singer-songwriter world. So for me, it was when you know it was it was a natural thing to to approach some tunes like that. But I normally in the jazz world, uh, you don't get that so, so much. And then he brought up this tune that I literally hadn't probably haven't even played on a gig since. Uh, since I recorded it, which was way back in the mid '90s. At, um, Tune of mine called Awareness. So we mentioned that. I was like, wow, that's a that's a a name out of the the uh, uh, distant past. Distant past. <laughs> yeah. You can Where did you hear that? that? Did you hear it from one of his records or on a gig? I don't recall. And Larry, that when we were fooling around, you played. I'm sure you played that for me too. And I was like, oh man, that's gonna be great. Yeah, it's like it was a, cool because he heard it. He heard it <laughs> as a as a thing that he, you know, because it's got a lot of. It's cool because he can play. Anything practically on the on the terms of, but he's also very lyrical. So in this tune is whole notes pretty much, right. and he just heard it as a lyrical. Uh, I think a, a a a way for him to sort of be lyrical and and really show his his sound, and it's got kind of a, a somber kind of tone. Just, to yeah, it. and it has like a rhythmic a a, a, a regal rhythmic statement. Yeah. I don't know what it is like. Da da. Da da, yeah. you know, it's like it just has a really nice rhythm to it. Yeah, and it's col it's got a lot of color. It's beautiful too. Yeah, uh, it made me appreciate, you know, see it on a in a different light to hear, as it always is when when somebody interprets a different a different music. conception. Yeah, to, was, to what you was like wow, thought of. I, I discovered some things about it that I hadn't. You know, And Preakness is the, you play in the Hammond B3. Yeah, now, that's kind of the funky one that I just had like a little morsel of an idea that was unfinished. I said we should do a groove tune, right? And mm -hmm. then, then. Did you do it in the studio? I mean, you came up with it in the studio or you guys had it ahead of time? Or? Ahead of time, I think he he had the groove and I just put my little ditty on the top of it. So it's, the groove is all Larry on that. <laughs> Oh, we did something different on that. We you left we left the uh, Derek playing the bass line, which is unusual, right? Right. So he's playing he's playing the riff while you know you're free to do uh, all the other stuff. He right. plays an amazing solo on that song. <laughs> Me, is there a meaning behind that? Is did you tie it into the horse race? Larry, that's your Was that title. my title? title. <laughs> I have no idea where I did it. But the standards you guys did together, did you kind of come up with the arrangements? Those are favorites of yours? I, I think three or four of them I had already worked out, but 
the three or four Larry helped me with. He came up with these uh, great riffs, like the thing you did on um, a Love for Sale for me. Oh, da, 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 oh da, yeah, da, 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 this cross rhythm. Thing. I hadn't oh. heard it because it was. It's been a minute well, since we recorded <laughs> this, so I heard that intro and I and I, and I was yeah, was that Bob's or mine? I couldn't remember. Uh -huh. Talking about you had you had done a record um, of Steve Allen tunes, but this is really more. This is more about you. This is more your project, your tunes, your conception. Um, Chez says, right. And the title yeah. too. Is there like a? Uh, is there something behind the title of that? Well, a lot of people when I was growing up, and a few people out here still. You know, my nickname is Chez, so I thought that'd be kind of clever. Chez says, you know, for one of the the tunes. And uh, which is the, the rhythm changes tune that, mm -hmm. that I wrote, and uh, thought I'd make a, a good album title. I don't know. Sounds good. That's the nothing more to it than that. <laughs> That's a great story, Bob. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You have uh, even people who aren't trombone players know you have a phenomenal technique on the trombone, and you have developed studies and even videos. And is this what you work on with students? Your doodle tonguing. Part of it. Part of it. Yes, doodle tonguing is a. Uh, one of the techniques I use, and it, with the thing about trombone that maybe a lot of uh, non-musicians or other musicians don't understand is that it's difficult because you have to tongue every note. It's not the the difficulty of the slide is one thing. It's not really the greater difficulty is that if we don't tongue, it goes so you have to go do 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 do, and then the tongue doesn't go that fast. So we have to develop ways of of playing fast and smooth and ticka 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 ta. Double tonguing like that is too harsh, so doodling, which is da 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 da, -da. they say doodle, but it's more like da 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 da. You can use that when you're going up the instrument, but when you come down, you have to use slurs, so there's this very complex set of patterns that has to be internalized, just like you would choose what finger that you're going to put on a key, yeah. and now you're going higher, and, you and now the finger has changed, and you're playing the same note. Mm -hmm. That has to be internalized on the trombone, so you might play a line da 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 da. Da -da 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 and it's changing all the time and rhythmically and when you're descending so that so that the clearest uh, result comes out of the end of your horn. Because well, so, it can be a little unwieldy with the with the draw bone. I mean and, and you hear different different people use it differently, but you have I think about the clearest articulation I think I've ever heard on trombone. Uh, some of the some of the tunes, even even some of the uh, slower, the ballad tunes. You know, it's like you you add all this. Uh, and the trombone's, a, you know, it, it's difficult, but it's an amazing instrument because of the way you can express and bend notes. You know, you're playing, you're controlling the pitch. The pitch, the tuning slide is in your hand, actually. You know, so there's <laughs> so much, there's a lot that you can do expression-wise with with an instrument like that. You know, like a, and then if you can, you know, overcome the the dexterity thing and get the articulation together. You know, and then then the last part of it is when you start playing faster, you can't be jerking the slide around because that upset. You have to be able to play it smoothly with your fingers and not your whole body shaking it to go fast enough and then it just becomes internalized and you you don't you're unaware of it when you play you're trying to hear good music when you sure, well, so I think that's all, what i all teach great you know? music, musicians have to get past the point of sort of the mechanics and into more into the conception of what you want to play what you want to come out <laughs> Where did you? Is I think you mentioned Carl Fontana. I uh, maybe Carl, I, I I picked up doodle tonguing on my own actually, uh, but but Carl Fontana certainly was a big doodle tonger, and you you know Carl's maybe playing, a, and. Um, Bill Watrous did it a little Watrous, bit too, and, and sure. uh, there's a, there's actually it's been around a long time. A lot of guys do it, you know? and uh, you you can you can you know a lot of people play it soft, but you can play it really loud. There's all kinds of things you can do with doodle tonguing. So, for all you trombone players, you know, like, 
go, you should give it a shot, you know, because it's the only way to really play the, the trombone really fast and make it emulate a trumpet, you know, or a saxophone. Right. Well, and some, of the, and some of the more modern things that you play, Chez says, and some of the other faster tunes, you know, when you're, especially when uh, you and Bob are in unison on a couple of those lines, those are like, it's amazing how clean that is. I'm Scott Willis. Thanks for joining me with Bob McChesney and Larry Goldings. You've been watching The Groove Files. And somebody's just joined us. We happen to have Hans Groiner, noted Austrian jazz scholar with us. And uh, we thought we'd ask him a few things about Bob's CD. Yes, uh, I had the uh, opportunity to listen to some of Bob's CD. And uh, it's, uh, well, I, I particularly like the, the, the quieter uh, moments, um, uh, for instance, between songs. Uh, the colors are, uh, and this looks very complicated. Um, I, I would not, let me first say that I did not technically enjoy the music, but he can play uh, things on the trombone that uh, uh, you could, uh, if you were trying to tame, say, a wild animal, um, I think some of the things that he's doing on the, on the trombone would be appropriate for that uh, situation. Uh, I have to say uh, I'm not a, not a fan, but I'm glad to have uh, checked it out, and as I, as, uh, I will uh, spread the word that uh, uh, people are still uh, making CDs. And, uh, well, congratulations, Bob. Thank you, Hans. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, what do you have coming up next? A uh, CD release party on uh, July, no, June the 4th at Catalina's. Oh, too bad I won't be around, oh. but uh, it sounds like uh, a lot of fun. Is this the one they use with the Ricola? Is this the instrument? Huh. 